His argument rests on one all-important piece of evidence taken from ice core surveys in which scientists drill deep into the ice to look back into Earth's climate history hundreds of thousands of years. The first ice core survey took place in Vostok in the Antarctic. What it found, as Al Gore correctly points out, was a clear correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature. Now one thing that kind of jumps out at you is, did, did they ever fit together? The relationship is actually very complicated, but there is one relationship that is far more powerful than all the others, and it is this. When there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer. Al Gore says the relationship between temperature and CO2 is complicated, but he doesn't say what those complications are. In fact, there was something very important in the ice core data that he failed to mention. Professor Ian Clark is a leading Arctic paleoclimatologist who looks back into the Earth's temperature record tens of millions of years. So here we're looking at the ice core record from Vostok, and in the red we see temperature going up, and then we see the CO2 coming up. CO2 lags behind that increase. It's got an 800-year lag, so temperature is leading CO2 by 800 years. There have now been several major ice core surveys. Every one of them shows the same thing. The temperature rises or falls, and then, after a few hundred years, carbon dioxide follows. CO2 clearly cannot be causing temperature changes. It's a product of temperature. It's following temperature changes. Carl Wunsch is professor of oceanography at MIT. He was also visiting professor in oceanography at Harvard University and University College London, and a senior visiting fellow in mathematics and physics at the University of Cambridge. He is the author of four major textbooks on oceanography. The ocean is the major reservoir into which carbon dioxide goes when it comes out of the atmosphere or to, from which it is readmitted to the, the atmosphere. If you heat the surface of the ocean, it tends to emit carbon dioxide. So similarly, if you cool the ocean surface, the ocean can dissolve more carbon dioxide. So the warmer the oceans, the more carbon dioxide they produce, and the cooler they are, the more they suck in. But why is there a time lag of hundreds of years between a change in temperature and a change in the amount of carbon dioxide going into or out of the sea? The reason is that oceans are so big and so deep, they take literally hundreds of years to warm up and cool down. The ocean has a memory of past events uh, running out as far as 10,000 years. So, for example, if somebody says, oh, I'm seeing changes in the North Atlantic, this must mean that the climate system is changing. It may only mean that something happened in a remote part of the ocean decades or hundreds of years ago, whose effects are now beginning to show up in the North Atlantic. Tutti sappiamo che i pesci respirano con le branchie. Tutti quindi dovremmo sapere che nell'acqua si trova disciolto dell'ossigeno in soluzione. Forse sono un po' di meno le persone che sanno che anche l'anidride carbonica si trova in soluzione nell'acqua, di mare, di lago e di fiume. Eppure, basterebbe ricordarsi cosa sia il ciclo del carbonio o fare una ricerca su di esso per averne conferma. Su questa immagine presa da Wikipedia, leggiamo che il contenuto complessivo del carbonio disciolto nelle acque del nostro pianeta, è dell'ordine di 700 miliardi di tonnellate. In realtà, disciolta nell'acqua, troviamo molta più anidride carbonica che ossigeno, come possiamo leggere in questo documento dell'Università di Roma. Documento che ci ricorda anche come, all'aumentare della temperatura, la solubilità dell'anidride carbonica diminuisce. Questo vuol dire che, aumentando la temperatura, c'è meno anidride disciolta nell'acqua. Questo significa che, quando aumenta la temperatura, l'acqua rilascia anidride carbonica nell'atmosfera. Sì, avete capito bene, conoscenze elementari di fisica e di chimica ci permettono di sapere con certezza che quando fa più caldo aumenta l'anidride carbonica nell'atmosfera, e non necessariamente il contrario.